Here are some common terms we encounter in liver imaging. Now, how are these terms related to one another? Let's start with this one. Third inflow. Third inflow is the physiology resulting to hepatic pseudolesions. Now, why is it called a third inflow? It's called third inflow because the portal vein is the first flow providing most of the liver blood supply, while the hepatic artery supplies the rest. The difference in this blood flow would explain why the liver is maximally enhanced in the portal venous phase. The first and the second inflow to the liver are labeled as 1 and 2. Now, should there be a third inflow to the vessel or another blood vessel supplying blood flow into the liver, this would be called the third inflow. Third inflow because the portal vein and hepatic artery are the first and second. This third inflow would cause a flow difference in the predictable locations in the liver. These portions of the liver supplied by third inflow vessels will have a different appearance than the rest of the liver, hence creating these pseudolesions. Pseudo because it's a focal mass-like finding but without real parenchymal change. Notice here that the vessels drawn in green bypasses the extrahepatic portal vein. So for example, in liver cirrhosis, the normal flow of blood into the liver, which goes this way, would become reversed. And this reversal of flow will create collaterals in the periumbilical region. And this would eventually create and gorge periumbilical vessels or caput medusae. A second example is when there is a block in the portal vein. When this happens, blood from the gut needs to find a way to get into the liver. Now, this third inflow vessels draining the pylorus and the duodenum would allow blood to reach the liver by passing this obstruction. This is what we call the cavernous transformation of the portal vein that we see in portal vein thrombosis. Now, let us name the three inflow vessels. First, the vein of sapi. The vein of sapi provides for a third inflow into the liver at a region near the falciform ligament. We have a superior vein and an inferior vein. Because the veins of sapi would receive blood from the superior epigastric and the inferior epigastric vein and the paraumbilical veins, it's called the epigastric paraumbilical venous system. Now, during the portal venous phase, where there is maximal enhancement of the liver via contrast within the blood flowing in the portal vein, these areas here supplied by the vein of sapi will have extra blood without contrast. And this creates a dilution of the contrast in areas near the falciform ligament, creating a pseudolesion. And it looks like this. Areas of hypoenhancement in a typical area. So aside from the vein of sapi, another third inflow vessel is the cholecystic vein. Notice here that the cholecystic vein would drain blood from the gallbladder and it brings blood directly to the liver. Now, this is the cause of the gallbladder fossa pseudolesion. So, one can also imagine that if the gallbladder is inflamed, there will be increased blood flow in the area in the gallbladder. Now, this increase of blood flow in the gallbladder will increase the flow through the cholecystic vein, hence creating a possible increase in enhancement in the gallbladder fossa. So aside from the cholecystic vein, we also have the pyloroduodeno pancreatic vein. Now because this vein would course in the region of the hepatoduodenal ligament, which also contains the common bile duct, this vein is part of the parabiliary venous system. This third inflow brings venous blood from the pylorus, duodenum, and the pancreas which is located here. 
So this third inflow would bring venous blood from digestive organs. This causes a potential hypo enhancement in segment 4, another typical area of third inflow pseudolesion. So another name for this parabiliary venous system is your aberrant right gastric vein. So, so far, we have seen the reason why certain areas of the liver are the typical locations for pseudolesions. And it's because these are the typical location of the third inflow vessels. Although not a proven reason for the focal fat sparing and focal fat infiltration, third inflow vessels would create a difference in the flow in the same regions where we see the pseudolesions. Differences in flow means difference in the delivery of nutrients and hormones, hence can explain focal fat sparing and focal fat infiltration in the same areas we see the pseudolesions. So why is it important? It's important to understand pseudolesions in order to avoid calling this as true lesions. And second, to understand that the presence of third inflow vessels are a potential areas of collateral flow. Seeing an abnormality in a third inflow area would prompt us to check for other abnormalities. So are pseudolesions coming from third inflow vessels the same as TADS or transient hepatic attenuation difference or transient hepatic intensity difference in MRI? Well, pseudolesions are a type of TADS. While pseudolesions may be seen in the arterial or portal venous phase and may be hypo or hyperenhancing, TADS are seen as transient arterial hyperenhancement. So TADS can have a variety of causes, and this will be anything that changes the portal vein flow and hepatic artery flow. So for example, if you have a rib compressing the liver, that would compress the portal vein flow in the periphery of the liver. When you have a decrease in portal vein flow, there is a compensatory increase in hepatic artery flow. And this would create a possible um, TAD near the region where there is a compression of the rib. Compression of the liver by the rib. Okay. However, not all TADs are benign. Other causes may be more sinister, like an increased arterial flow due to a tumor, Recruiting hepatic arteries or arterial vessels as in HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. So going back to our first slide, now we know that the third inflow is actually a physiology which would explain pseudolesions, focal sparing, and focal fatty infiltration. We also understand now that pseudolesions are a type of TAD. If one sees a pseudolesion, or one sees a TAD, we are prompted to think and check for alterations of blood flow in the liver. That's it for now. Thank you very much for listening.